Hi YouTuber, it's George. I'm in the kitchen. It's too wet and cold in the garage. It goes from one extreme to another. It's gone from like 18 degrees and it went down to about 4. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway, I've had a, a few more questions relating to my cavity filters and uh, some of them I, I just can't answer because I don't have the answers because I copied some of the dimensions and things from other people's videos but one one question was the size of the copper pipe which is eight millimeter and did I um, do anything with the olives which I have done I've cut a slot in it so it makes it easy to slide up and down and I drilled the inline copper fitting brass fitting so the pipe can go all the way through now I had another question what does it look like inside the cavity well to be honest it's empty it's like a cup you know there's nothing in it you know to speak of I have actually put some pieces of plastic as an insulator so that these solder joints here don't catch on the side which they don't um, now yeah, there's not a lot else I can say really um, why is there four well if it's going to be a repeater you need a bandpass filter and a notch filter for the receiver and a bandpass filter and notch filter vice versa for the transmitter so you've got two there so the error goes there it goes that that's connect it will go to that one when it's fitted that wire so the error goes on there that way I'll go to transmitter or receiver and that way there right um, reason for that is you don't want the transmitter to go signal output to go into the receiver and things like that that's fairly straightforward now why I started making cavity filters is um, interference on the local repeater frequency so when I was listening to the repeater I used to get a, a sound game come through and um, if you're going to build a notch filter to get rid of the interfering frequency you first of all need to identify the frequency which is desensitizing your receiver or causing you an issue and you do that by using a scanner radio or um, a spectrum analyzer and once you've got the frequency that's giving the interference you can then put that frequency into your nano VNA and put it on um, SWR if you want and you adjust the length of the core so it has the lowest SWR at that frequency that's causing you the problem and how you do that is by putting a, a T piece on the top with a 50 ohm dummy load. Okay, like that. And you're actually checking the SWR. But, you know, if it's a passband filter, uh, you need to obviously allow it to pass the frequency you want and that is you have an input and output so again you can put a, a dummy load on one end if you want or you can take the output of the nano VNA because it's got an input and output here and you look for the least amount of attenuation by adjusting the rod for the frequency you want to listen to or transmit not sure whether that's making any sense um, I'm not an expert at these I just copied 
other people's ideas but they tended to use coke tins or baked bean tins or coffee jar uh, coffee tins and things like that these were I thought at the time were readily available but I only found two of them and I had to buy the other two now in terms of the these couplings here uh, the dimensions this is for the 70 centimeter band remember not two meter the dimensions here are fairly critical but I've already covered that off in a, a different video if you find if you've got the dimensions right and you're still getting a reasonably high SWR you may need to bend these in and when I say bend them in you're bending this bit here to the center of that coax connector you bring it in if you bring it out you uh, you get quite a high SWR and you push it in but the main tuning is done with the copper rod the cavity filters are basically finished and um, I did do some work with the nano VNA but I think the nano VNA is playing up because I was getting some peculiar results but I've done each ca cavity in turn so what you've got here is got two bandpass filters and two notch filters the aerial goes on there and then the, the transmitter on there and the receiver on there if it's going to be used as a repeater on the um, 77th band but issue I've come up with is um, or discovered is these copper rods if you were just some several times like I've been doing and um, because the copper's soft when you tighten it even finger tight to stop the rods from moving it makes a mark on the copper which means it doesn't slide up and down very easy so I've got some brass um, rods on order so the price of the project just keeps creeping up with all these extra bits but um, I'm not going to do another video on it now that's enough um, so thanks for watching anyway and um, please subscribe and like